Almighty God says, Christ of the last days brings life and brings the enduring and everlasting way of truth. This truth is the path by which man gains life, and it is the only path by which man shall know God and be approved by God. If you do not seek the way of life provided by Christ of the last days, then you shall never gain the approval of Jesus and shall never be qualified to enter the gate of the kingdom of heaven, for you are both a puppet and a prisoner of history. Those who are controlled by regulations, by letters, and shackled by history will never be able to gain life nor gain the perpetual way of life. This is because all they have is turbid water, which has been clung to for thousands of years, instead of the water of life that flows from the throne. The steps of God's work are vast and mighty, like surging waves and rolling thunders. Yet you sit passively, awaiting destruction, clinging to your folly and doing nothing. In this way, how can you be considered someone who follows the footsteps of the Lamb? How can you justify the God that you hold on to as a God who is always new and never old? And how can the words of your yellowed books carry you across into a new age? How can they lead you to seek the steps of God's work? And how can they take you up to heaven? What you hold in your hands are letters that can provide but temporary solace, not truths that are capable of giving life. The scriptures you read can only enrich your tongue and are not words of wisdom that can help you know human life, much less the paths that can lead you to perfection. Does this discrepancy not give you cause for reflection? Does it not make you realize the mysteries contained within? Are you capable of delivering yourself to heaven to meet God on your own? Without the coming of God, can you take yourself into heaven to enjoy family happiness with God? Are you still dreaming now? I suggest, then, that you stop dreaming and look at who is working now. Look to see who is now carrying out the work of saving man during the last days. If you do not, you shall never gain the truth and shall never gain life. Amen. Amen. These words of Almighty God made me think of my faith in the past. Because I clung to religious notions in the words of the Bible, I nearly missed out on God's salvation of the last days. God used truly wondrous means to help me be lucky enough to hear His voice and greet the Lord's return. Thank God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. I'd like to share some things. Okay, great. 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 This one morning a couple of years ago, I woke up quite early. I opened the Bible by my bed and read about the Lord Jesus rebuking the Pharisees. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said to them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. I guess... I was a little sad at the time. I felt like the current state of the church was the same as that of the temple at the end of the age of law. That's right. All the time, the pastors and elders in the church would say that believers should love each other. However, they themselves were fighting, always arguing over the offerings. They would even accept bribes in exchange for prayers and would sometimes determine how long they would pray based on how much they were promised. Right. Most church members were weak, and fewer people would show up to gatherings. The pastors and elders were lackadaisical in their sermons and didn't seek how to shepherd the Lord's flock. Yet they never tired of officiating believers' weddings. The pastor in my old church was like that as well. I bet. That's right. Well, the church should be a place of worship, but it had become nothing more than a wedding venue. I thought to myself, the pastors have strayed from the Lord's way. 
The church now has a secular feeling. It's just like at the end of the age of law, when the temple was bleak. So, will the Lord appear to this kind of church when he returns? He won't. Just as I was thinking this, the alarm on my phone dinged. And when I turned it off, I noticed a recommendation for a YouTube video that I'd received from the Church of Almighty God. I was completely puzzled. I had never seen that church's channel or subscribed to it. So why would I get that notice? Then I remembered that about a month before, a friend of mine had taken me to hear a sermon there. It had made a strong impression on me. It was really new and enlightening. It was beneficial. I'd wanted to hear more about it. But they were all testifying that the Lord Jesus had already returned, that he was expressing lots of truths and was performing judgment in the last days, and that the book The Word Appears in the Flesh contained Almighty God's words. They said that at all their gatherings, they would fellowship on Almighty God's words. I couldn't make heads or tails of it. The pastors and elders always told us that all God's words and work are in the Bible, and that his words and work don't exist outside of that. So how could they testify that the Lord had uttered new words? Entire generations of believers base their faith on the Bible. Belief in the Lord was belief in the Bible. How could anything else be faith in the Lord? Each time my friend asked me to hear more sermons at that church, I would decline. So therefore, when I saw that link from the Church of Almighty God on my phone, I didn't tap it. But to my surprise, for the next several days, I would regularly receive YouTube recommendations for movies and hymns available on the church's channel. And I thought, I've not subscribed to their channel, but I keep getting these notices. Maybe the Lord is guiding me. Is it the Lord's will that I look at the Church of Almighty God's channel? At this thought, I prayed to the Lord, like so, O Lord, there must be a reason why these videos keep popping up on my phone. They testify that you've already returned. Is that really correct? Should I watch these videos? Lord, please guide me. Soon after, these words from the Lord Jesus came to mind. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for, for theirs, theirs is, is the, the kingdom, kingdom of heaven. heaven. Amen. Amen. Indeed. This is a huge deal. So when I hear about the coming of the Lord, I should seek with deep humility, investigate it, give it careful thought. Yes, that's right. To see if Almighty God might be the Lord Jesus returned. If I didn't seek or investigate it, and the Lord really had returned, wouldn't I be missing my chance to welcome His coming? Yes. yes. At this thought, I decided I should watch some of the church's videos. Thanks be to God. When I investigated its website, I saw there was such variety of content, including movies, hymn videos, choral specials, and articles and testimonies. One of the recorded hymn videos, My Beloved, Please Wait For Me, Uh huh. That song impressed me. had lyrics that were so moving and powerful. They made me think about my time within a desolate church, looking everywhere for a church that had the work of the Holy Spirit. The more that I explored the site, the more sustenance I gained from it. I wanted to understand and look into the church. So I found many more movies to watch on their website, and I watched every single one of them. One day, I watched a gospel movie. The movie closely examined the relationship between God and the Bible. I'll simply never forget this one passage of God's words. From the time when there was the Bible, people's belief in the Lord has been the belief in the Bible. Instead of saying people believe in the Lord, it is better to say they believe in the Bible. Rather than saying they have begun reading the Bible, it is better to say they have begun believing in the Bible. And rather than saying they have returned before the Lord, it would be better to say they have returned before the Bible. In this way, people worship the Bible as if it were God as if it were their lifeblood. 
and losing it would be the same as losing their life. People see the Bible as being as high as God, and there are even those who see it as higher than God. If people are without the work of the Holy Spirit, if they cannot feel God, they can carry on living. But as soon as they lose the Bible, or lose the famous chapters and sayings from the Bible, then it is as if they have lost their life. Most people simply do not understand why they should believe in God, nor how to believe in God, and do nothing but search blindly for clues to decipher the chapters of the Bible. People have never pursued the direction of the work of the Holy Spirit. All along, they have done nothing but desperately study and investigate the Bible. And no one has ever found newer work of the Holy Spirit outside of the Bible. No one has ever departed from the Bible, nor have they ever dared to do so. After watching this part, I thought, that's precisely my attitude toward the Bible. I feel like it represents the Lord. Faith in Him is faith in the Bible, and therefore, the two are inseparable. But what I don't understand is this. The Bible's the Lord's testimony and the foundation of our faith. As Christians, we've based our faith on the Bible for 2,000 years. Could it be that this isn't in line with the Lord's will? What's really going on here? So I kept watching the movie, wanting these questions answered. The character sharing the gospel read another passage of God's words. They believe in my existence only within the scope of the Bible, and they equate me with the Bible. Without the Bible, there is no me, and without me, there is no Bible. They pay no heed to my existence or actions, but instead devote extreme and special attention to each and every word of Scripture. Many more even believe that I should not do anything I wish to do unless it is foretold by Scripture. They attach too much importance to Scripture. It can be said that they see words and expressions as too important. To the extent that they use verses from the Bible to measure every word I say and to condemn me. What they seek is not the way of compatibility with me or the way of compatibility with the truth, but the way of compatibility with the words of the Bible. And they believe that anything that does not conform to the Bible is, without exception, not my work. Are such people not the dutiful descendants of the Pharisees? The Jewish Pharisees used the law of Moses to condemn Jesus. They did not seek compatibility with the Jesus of that time, but diligently followed the law to the letter, to the extent that, after having charged him with not following the law of the Old Testament and not being the Messiah, they ultimately nailed the innocent Jesus to the cross. What was their essence? Was it not that they didn't seek the way of compatibility with the truth? They obsessed over each and every word of Scripture while paying heed neither to my will nor to the steps and methods of my work. They were not people who sought the truth, but people who rigidly clung to words. They were not people who believed in God, but people who believed in the Bible. Essentially, they were watchdogs of the Bible. After reading this passage, they went on in fellowship. They said that people of faith think that believing in the Lord equates to believing in the Bible, but this view is not correct. They also said, when the Lord Jesus was preaching and working, his followers departed themselves from the scriptures. They accepted his words and his work. Can we really say they didn't believe in the Lord? The Pharisees of Judaism all clung to the scriptures, but crucified the Lord Jesus, who did the work of redemption and who expressed the truth. What was the problem there? Does clinging to the scriptures mean a person knows the Lord? 
And does it demonstrate that they adhere to the Lord's way, that they revere and submit to Him? God's the source of life. He is the Lord of all creation, while the Bible is nothing more than a record of God's past work and of God's past words. How could it be placed on par with God? That's, That's right. right. These believers say they believe in the Lord, but treat the Bible as equal to God. They worship the Bible and even supplant the Lord's work with the Bible. Isn't that devaluing and blaspheming the Lord? Yes. yes. Is someone who clings to the Bible without seeking the Lord's work or appearance a follower of the Lord? Consider what the Lord Jesus said to the Pharisees. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. He also said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No, no man, man comes, comes to the, the Father but by me. Amen. The Lord Jesus was very clear on how the scriptures relate to God. The scriptures merely testify to God. They don't represent the Lord, nor can they replace his work of salvation. Holding to the Bible can't bring us eternal life. Only Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. In order to gain life, we have to seek the Lord. That's, That's right. right. I was so moved once I finished the movie. All that it said felt like it accorded with the Lord Jesus' words. I realized that the Bible doesn't represent the Lord. It's He who supplies us with life, not the Bible. Belief in the Bible is not the same as belief in the Lord. Amen. Yes. I'd always thought the Bible did represent Him. Hadn't I held the Bible as higher than the Lord? True. As I thought about it, I realized the truth in Almighty God's words could resolve my confusion. I had to seek and investigate, or I'd miss my chance to welcome the Lord. Amen. I then decided I would go back to the Church of Almighty God with my friend. Great. When we arrived at the church, the brothers and sisters received us warmly and patiently fellowshiped with us. I explained my confusion to them, saying, In our gatherings, the pastors and elders always say, that all of God's work and words are in the Bible, and anything outside it can't contain His work or words. But you're bearing witness that the Lord Jesus has returned as Almighty God, and that He's doing new work in the last days, and expressing new words. So what is really going on? Sister Jo read a few passages of Almighty God's words in response. Let's read them now. Great. 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 Many people believe that understanding and being able to interpret the Bible is the same as finding the true way. But in fact, are things really so simple? No one knows the reality of the Bible, that it is nothing more than a historical record of God's work and a testament to the previous two stages of God's work, and that it offers you no understanding of the aims of God's work. Everyone who has read the Bible knows that it documents the two stages of God's work during the Age of Law and the Age of Grace. The Old Testament chronicles the history of Israel and Jehovah's work from the time of creation until the end of the Age of Law. The New Testament records Jesus' work on earth, which is in the four Gospels, as well as the work of Paul. Are these not historical records? The things that are recorded in the Bible are limited. They cannot represent the work of God in its entirety. The four Gospels have fewer than 100 chapters altogether, in which are written a finite number of happenings, such as Jesus cursing the fig tree, Peter's three denials of the Lord, Jesus appearing to the disciples following his crucifixion and resurrection, teaching about fasting, teaching about prayer, teaching about divorce, the birth and genealogy of Jesus, Jesus' appointments of the disciples, and so forth. However, man values them as treasures, even comparing the work of today against them. They even believe that all the work of Jesus did in his life amounted only to so much, as if God were only capable of doing this much and nothing further. Is that not absurd? 
At the time, Jesus only gave his disciples a series of sermons in the Age of Grace on such subjects as how to practice, how to gather together, how to supplicate in prayer, how to treat others, and so forth. The work he carried out was that of the Age of Grace, and he expounded only on how the disciples and those who followed him ought to practice. He only did the work of the Age of Grace, and none of the work of the last days. The work of God in each age has clear boundaries. He does only the work of the current age, and never carries out the next stage of work in advance. Only thus can his representative work of each age be brought to the fore. Jesus spoke only of the signs of the last days, of how to be patient and how to be saved, of how to repent and confess, and of how to bear the cross and endure suffering. Never did he speak of how man in the last days should achieve entry, nor of how he should seek to satisfy God's will. As such, is it not ridiculous to search the Bible for God's work of the last days? What can you see by merely clutching the Bible? Be it an expositor of the Bible or a preacher, who could have seen the work of today in advance? Amen. If you wish to see the work of the Age of Law and to see how the Israelites followed the way of Jehovah, then you must read the Old Testament. If you wish to understand the work of the Age of Grace, then you must read the New Testament. But how do you see the work of the last days? You must accept the leadership of the God of today and enter into the work of today. For this is the new work, and no one has previously recorded it in the Bible. Amen. The work of today is a path that man has never walked and a way that no one has ever seen. It is work that has never been done before. It is God's latest work on earth. Who could have recorded every single bit of today's work without omission in advance? Who could have recorded this mightier, wiser work that defies convention in that moldy old book? The work of today is not history. And as such, if you wish to walk the new path of today, then you must depart from the Bible. You must go beyond the books of prophecy or history in the Bible. Only then will you be able to walk the new path properly, and only then will you be able to enter into the new realm and the new work. Amen. 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 Once she read these words, Sister Jo continued her fellowship, saying, Everyone versed in the Bible knows that the Old and the New Testaments are only a record of God's work in the age of law as well as the age of grace. They testify God's work. When God completed a stage of work, those who experienced it would then record an account of His work and of His words. These records were later compiled into the Bible. Right. It's also known that the totality of God's work and words in both of these ages were not fully recorded within the Bible. The Lord Jesus' words in the Bible are the tip of the iceberg. Just as it says in the Gospel of John, And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Amen. There were some prophets' prophecies in the age of law that weren't included. This is common knowledge. Yes. It's true. So when pastors and elders say that all of God's words are in the Bible and none of his words and work are outside of it, aren't they contradicting the facts? Yes. Aren't they lying and being deceitful? Mm. God's the Lord of creation. He's so great and so abundant. How could one book fully encompass his work in words, even if it's the Bible? Amen. She then read the following. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book, written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And one of the elders said to me, Weep not. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. She said, So there's writing inside and outside of this book, and it's sealed with seven seals. 
and only the returned Lord of the Last Days can open the book and remove the seven seals. That's the only way we can see what's inside. It's said many times in Revelation, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. These biblical prophecies prove that the Lord will utter more words when He returns. So, could the returned Lord's work in words be recorded in the Bible in advance? Could God's words in the Bible replace what the Holy Spirit says to the churches in the last days? Could they replace the book opened by the Lamb? Could they replace God's work of judgment in the last days? After hearing all of this, I then thought, I've read all these verses many times. Why haven't these questions ever occurred to me? Hmm. The sister went on in fellowship. The Bible's a record. It contains God's work from the past. Many years after the Old Testament was produced, the Lord Jesus came and performed redemption for the Age of Grace. So, did His work and words automatically insert themselves into the Scriptures? No. God's work and words had to have been compiled and then made into the Bible. Yes. Almighty God has come in the last days to express truths to purify mankind. Could these truths simply insert themselves into the Bible? No. no. So claiming that all of God's work and words are within the Bible, and that none could ever exist outside of that, is a view that is just absurd, erroneous, and the result of human notions and imaginings. Mm. Hearing Sister Joe's fellowship was really enlightening. Everything that she fellowshipped lined up with the facts. The Bible's a record of two stages of God's work, the Age of Law and the Age of Grace. It testifies His work, but it can't represent the Lord or His work and words within the last days. The Lord Jesus' work and words weren't even fully recorded in the Bible. So how could the work and words of God in the last days be recorded in the Bible ahead of time? True. True. I followed the pastors and elders' words, limiting God's work and words to what's within the Bible, and believing that nothing existing outside of that came from God. Wasn't I blindly talking nonsense? Wasn't I delimiting and blaspheming the Lord? True. True. I was consumed with regret. Why hadn't I read Almighty God's words earlier? I shouldn't have blindly followed pastors and elders in delimiting God's work based on notions. Yes. These views truly are quite harmful. Indeed. Indeed. Sister Jo then brought up another topic. Why is it that just upholding the Bible without accepting God's work and words of the last days means people can't enter God's kingdom? She said, the Bible's a record of two stages of God's work. It can't replace God judging and purifying mankind in the last days. Mm, yes. During the age of law, God's main work was to proclaim the law and commandments to guide people's lives on earth. In the age of grace, the Lord Jesus just performed the work of redemption, and He was then crucified to redeem mankind from Satan's domain, redeem us of our sins, and make us qualified to pray to God so that we could enjoy all of God's grace. However, our sinful nature and the root cause of our sin were not yet resolved. That's why we always lie, sin, rebel against and resist God. Yes. We're not worthy to enter God's kingdom. That's why the Lord Jesus prophesied He'd return and express truths in the last days to judge and to save man. Amen. It says within the Gospel of John, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when He, the Spirit of Truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. Amen. It also says, He that rejects me and receives not my words has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Almighty God coming in the last days to express the truths and to perform judgment fulfills the Lord Jesus' prophecies. Almighty God has expressed millions of words, and these words cover everything. Mysteries of the Bible, prophecies of the kingdom, mankind's destination, and the root of man's opposition to God are unveiled. Also, God very clearly reveals the truths that people need in order to attain full salvation. Yes. Amen. yes. That includes the inside story of God's three stages of work, 
God's judgment work in the last days, and God's incarnations. God reveals how Satan corrupts mankind, how God works to save man, the essence and truth of mankind's corruption by Satan, what true faith, submission, and love for God are, how to live out a life of meaning, and more. The truths that Almighty God utters in the last days are the way of eternal life He gives us. Amen. Amen. If we cling to the Bible and reject God's judgment and purification in the last days, we'll never gain the truth, cast off sin, be saved, and enter the kingdom of heaven. Yes. The fellowship from the brothers and sisters showed me that Almighty God's judgment work in the last days fulfills biblical prophecies. Amen. Amen. Almighty God's words are the truth. They are the voice of God. Amen. And they're the way of eternal life God gives us in the last days. Amen. Yes. Because I had listened to the religious notions of pastors and elders, I thought God's work and words were limited to the Bible. I rejected God's work of the last days. Without the sustenance of God's current words, I fell into darkness. Yes. Without God's mercy and salvation, in showing me the Church of Almighty God's YouTube films, allowing me to hear God's voice, I'd still be following pastors, and I would never have sought God's work in the last days. As such, I could read the Bible for centuries, but I'd never welcome the Lord's return. That's, That's right. right. My ability to gain God's salvation in the last days, I now see was all thanks to His guidance. This is God's wondrous salvation. Amen. Amen. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. This is wonderful. That's right. This is God Himself guiding and saving us.